ready to get back into our Father's Word. Chapter 43, about the eighth verse of this great uh, book of Genesis, from the beginning. We're in this part where Joseph, directed by God, became a type of Savior for not only Israel, Jacob's family, but also for the Gentiles of the known world at that time. Inasmuch as God gave him the vision to, to put aside supplies that would feed all through that drought. Now, the drought of the end times is not for bread as it was at this time, but as it is written in Amos chapter uh, 8, I believe it is, uh, the famine in the end times is for hearing the word of God. So, as it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. The main thing Joseph, who is now next in command under Pharaoh in Egypt, is will these brothers sell his full brother, which is to say little Benjamin, would they sell him like they did Joseph? And he's given them a pretty hard time. They've got every bit of it coming. Uh, Joseph saw fit to send grain back with them in keeping Simon there in prison or bondage put all their money back in the sacks and this to worry him a little bit and sent them home with the grain with the stipulation that they bring their youngest brother with them so he can prove them as to whether they were lying to him or not of course when Israel or Jacob heard this he refused, I mean flat refused to allow Benjamin to leave his sight because of what had happened to Joseph. So the brothers have basically said, hey, we're going to, uh, Dad, we're all going to die anyway of starvation if we don't do something. So Judah himself picks up um, the plea uh, from, Reuben, uh, from Reuben here in the 8th uh, verse of this 43rd chapter. Let's just go with it. J Judah beginning to take the plea that they, uh, he allowed Benjamin to go. And verse 8, a word of wisdom from our father, and it reads, And Judah said unto Israel his father, Jacob, Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou and all our little ones. In other words, we're starving to death, Dad. If we stay here without doing anything, we're dead. We're gone. Verse 9. I will be surety for him. In other words, I will, I'll be the guarantee. I'll stay in his stead if that be necessary. Of my hand shalt thou require him. If I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. I will be fully responsible. This is uh, rather strange when you think about it. Not strange, but an oddity that it would be through this one Judah that's making this pledge and standing surety who the true Savior will come through. Verse 10. For except we be lingered, surely now we had returned this second time. We should have already been back from our second trip. We've lingered and everybody's out of food. We have no food feed for our animals and so forth. We should have already been returned from that second trip. 11. And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, and myrrh, nuts, and almonds. Now, this would have been quite a gift because in the drought, you're not going to have all that much fruit and, and uh, seasonings. Now, they wouldn't be that plenteous, so it would be quite a gift. Verse 12. And take double money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand, peradventure. It was an oversight. Just, let's just don't take any chances. In other words, they're afraid that they stuck the money back in the sack saying they didn't pay their bill. 
and so forth. There, uh, Joseph, who was head over Egypt, and them not recognizing Joseph, they said the man talked very rough to us. He was hard on us. Verse 13. Take also your brother and arise, go again unto the man. In other words, this, it was, there was no choice in the matter. They were dying. Verse 14. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin, that would be Simon who they were holding, and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. As it is, so it is, so be it. Verse 15. And the men took that present and they took double money in their hand and Benjamin and rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. Here they stand. And here is Joseph with his full brother, as well as his half-brothers, all there, 16. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, Bring these men home, and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. I'm sure this is going to cause some anxiety also because these, uh, these old boys are going to wonder why is this man of such importance having us as a house, house guest for dinner? 17. And the man did as Joseph bade and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. 18. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house and they said because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in we're about to get it that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses verse 19 and they came near to the steward of Joseph's house and they communed with him at the door of the house. In other words, we're caught. It's obvious. We better start doing some talking. So the talking, the communing begins. Verse 20. And he said, Oh, sir. Now this is just to a servant. This is not Joseph. Oh, sir. We came indeed down at the first time to buy food. We made a trip down here. 21. And it came to pass when we came to the end on our way back home, we made the rest over stop, that we opened our sacks and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. And we have brought it again in our hand. I mean, they're getting all the feelers possible out front there. Verse 22. And other money have we brought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. We're as innocent as a, a newborn babe. We had nothing to do with this. Here's both amounts. You know, we, we want to know coming out the gate that we're, we're honest. We're, we're square with you, or we want to get square. Verse 23. And he said, Peace be to you. From an Egyptian, this means something of the nature. Don't worry about it. Fear not, your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto them. Now, I imagine, and I mean, he's assuring them there was no fraud involved, and by this time, I'm sure their minds are in a spin. What's going on here? This Egyptian is talking about our God, and the God of our fathers, how would he know that? And of course, naturally, Pharaoh himself, knowing that it was because of our father and his blessings on Joseph, that Pharaoh and his people were even eating right at this time. That, um, that they were saved because the drought had certainly already been in effect. I believe this would be the second year. We'll, we'll find out here in a moment. So they're beginning to respect, or at least, yeah, not believe necessarily, but respect the God of Joseph. 24. 
And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provenda. In other words, in this country, there were no sidewalks. You walked in the dirt, dirt paths and so forth. And usually with sandals on, your feet filthy dirty. You know, so that was, this was customary before you walked into a house, 25. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon. For they heard that they should eat bread there. And again, this means food. And I'm sure that this had them very puzzled. I know that suspicion, they would say, this man is trying to entrap us. 26. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their uh, hand, into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And again, fulfilling that prophecy that when Joseph was just a lad with that coat of many colors, he said, hey boys, and to his brothers, I dreamed a dream that my sheaf or I was standing upright and all of you were bowing to me. Well, that naturally didn't set well with them, but here it's come to pass. They're doing it. 27. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spake, is he yet alive? And I'm sure Joseph's heart was just bursting for news from home and the dad he loved so much. And he has to sit back and question in this way, but it's obvious that this is the first thing he asked, you know, how, how's his health? 28. And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive, and they bowed down their heads and made obeyance. Again, fulfilling that prophecy that God brought to the lad when he was only 17 years old. And bear in mind, this probably was one of the major things that caused his brothers to turn on him, to wear the coat of inheritance and say they were all going to bow to him. Uh, would be one of the reasons that would cause them to sell him into slavery. 29. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, a full brother, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? Question. And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. I'm sure, again, that his heart's just bursting because... Um, he having a few years on little old Benjamin and, um, and no doubt just wanting to take him in his arms and hold him 30. And Joseph made haste for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. That means from the very with inside, deep inside him. And he sought where to weep and he entered into his chamber and wept there. He didn't want them to see him weeping. But he couldn't handle it any longer. So he slipped out and, and broke down with, with love for these men. But still, he must prove them. After all, they were speaking of killing him, dumping him, dumping him into a cistern, and then selling him to foreigners. You see, ultimately, so you have it straight in your mind, He's going to find out if they'll do the same to Benjamin, if they'll sell him, Benjamin, his full brother, to save their own hides. Verse 31, and he washed his face. After he finished weeping, he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, set on bread, which is to say, let's eat. It's on the table, let's eat. And he's controlling himself. Verse 32. And they set on for him by himself. That is to say, uh, Joseph's servants, the Egyptian servants, they set him up a table by himself. And for them by themselves, that's to say his brothers at a table by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves. This was customary that uh, someone of the rank of Joseph never, never sit uh, at food with um, 
uh, commoners, shall we say, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptian. There's much talk on this. The Egyptians would not eat female meat. All right? And um, naturally, the Hebrews would always have and always will. But um, it was difference in food laws and so on and so forth. 33. And they said before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled one at another. How does he know which one of us is which? I'm sure that this is amazing them and probably at the same time this would would create a bit of an urgency uneasiness among them as this guy what can we hide from him he seems to know everything verse 34 and he took and sent messages unto them from before him but Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs and they drank and were merry with him in other words they weren't jealous do you understand how he's working this not that the little tyke could not have possibly eaten all of it not five times more but he's being very partial and showing partiality to the little one to see if it makes them jealous like they were always jealous of him. They weren't. It made them happy and they, they continued on. Uh, and we come to chapter 44, verse 1. Same thoughts, let's, and it continues. Verse 1. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry. And put every man's money in his sack's mouth. Give them their money back again. Two. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest. And his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. Now, this cup, his favorite drinking cup, in, in this... Um, way of life had a real special meaning. It was almost a religious object, so to speak, uh, of, of, uh, object of prestige. And um, what is he doing? He's setting up Benjamin. Um, because for someone to steal this cup would be a, it could mean death, all right? Simply mean death. He has it put in Benjamin, his full brother's sack. Verse 3. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses, four. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? In other words, you come down on them hard. Five. Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? In other words, um, uh, the object to tell the future with, so to speak, okay? Now Joseph did not do this, but it was the custom of that area. Ye have done evil in so doing. I mean, do you talk about Heartbreak Ridge? This would be a bad time. Six. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. Seven. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? Question. God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. There is no way we would steal anything from you. Eight. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? What in the world would we do that for? 9. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. 
Now, if you find it, you know, there is something really ironic about this. Do you remember when Rachel, when Jacob was separating from Laban? And Rachel stole the teraphim out of her father's house, remember? Just a thought in passing. Here, her youngest son, the son that brought about her death, is uh, being basically accused, though innocent. Ten. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words, He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. In other words, I'm, I'm not going to kill whoever it's with. He's going to stay here and be my servant. And the rest of you, hey, you're innocent. You're good old boys. I'm going to let you go home. So the trap is set. Do you understand? In other words, it's planted in Benjamin's sack. They know that. Now, the poor old father has done told him, hey, it'll kill me if you don't bring that boy back. So Joseph has it set, whereas he's going to find out for one and all times, will they, when, when they see the cup in the little Benjamin's cup, they have freedom, are they going to run like dogs? Or how are they going to react? I mean, it, it's working well for him. But it's going to be quite a shock to some old boys here. Eleven. Then they speedily took down every man his sack. I mean, they knew they had taken nothing. I mean, they're home free, as far as they're concerned, to the ground and opened every man his sack. Let me help you here. Let's find it. Twelve. And he searched and began at the eldest, dragging this out, and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Whoa, oh boy, I mean, this will take them all back by their own mouth. They said, if one of us took it, let it mean death for him. And they know what they promised Papa back home. And you talk about trouble. They got trouble. But they can leave Benjamin with them, take an old rag and bloody it up again and say some animal got him and go home free. Just forget about little old Benjamin. Just run for all you're worth. What will they do? 13. Then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city. They didn't run. They're on their way back. 14. I mean, they're, I, I, I can imagine that every thought in the world went through their mind as they're dragging back to town here. Thought they had it made. 14. And Judah... And his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there. You bet he was. He had been waiting. And they fell before him on the ground. Now you talk about getting right down there uh, humbly. They were such. Verse 15. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? Don't you think I know through my divining cup he's, that I know what you're doing? Oh, I imagine that the souls are getting lower and lower by the minute here. 16. And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? I mean, he's caught. He, he's been had. What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? Question. God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. In other words, they're talking about the sin of selling Joseph. So God, God is caught up with us. 17. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. It's Joseph speaking. And as for you, get ye up in, in peace unto your father. Here he's doing it again. So you, you leave that boy here and the rest of you get on home. 18. Then Judah came near unto him and said, Oh my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear. 
And let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. You, you have the power that Pharaoh does. Please give me that opportunity to speak. 19. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? 20. And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. That would be Joseph to whom he's speaking. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. Judah's getting right down there with it now, 21. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. 22. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. It would kill the old man if something happened. 23. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. I don't want anything to do with you. 24. And it came to pass, when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. 25. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. 26. And we said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother uh, be with us. Then will we go down, for we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us. 27. And thy servant my father said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. Joseph would have been one of them. 28. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. And I saw him not since. 29. And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. It will kill me, and you might as well bury me. That's what he's saying. 30. Now therefore, Judah continues talking to Joseph. Now therefore, when I came to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, 31, it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. They knew they had messed up, and they knew God had finally caught up with them. 32, and thy servant became surety, that's I, Judah, became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Quite a vow. 33, now therefore I pray thee, let this, thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my Lord. And let the lad go up with his brethren. 34. For how, how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Question. Lest prevention, I see the evil that shall come of my father. Can't do it. Now, Joseph, bingo, he's found out what he wanted to know. Would they sell and betray Benjamin the way they had him? Did they have compassion for the old man, knowing this would break his heart? Would they care less, let the old man die, we're free, and to heck with Benjamin? No, he found out what he wanted to know. Verse 45, 1. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried. Cause every man to go out from me, that's the Egyptians, make them leave. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. Two, and he wept aloud. 
and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard what is going on. Three, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? In other words, he found out what he wanted to know. And his brethren could not answer him. They were in shock. For they were troubled at his presence. They did not understand this. But you must remember, again, he's a type of Christ. That is to say, bringing salvation both to the Gentile and to the Israelites. For, and Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me. I pray you, and they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold, you sold into, into, into Egypt. It's me. I'm sure that there was, I wonder how many of them saw the, the uh, thing that God had shown him about their sheaves bending to his sheaves, five. Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. And there you have it. There you have Joseph giving God the credit. But at the same time, now that he had proved in his own mind and heart that they would not sell Benjamin as they had him, that certainly... Um, he could rest at ease now and make himself known. And I am sure that the minds of these, when he says, I am Joseph, it was God that sent me on ahead to bring salvation to our people, that, um, that they were having a difficult time catching up. And I'm sure in Joseph's heart that it was breaking for the companionship of his own kinsmen knowing that they had finally learned to stand up and be men. Six, Joseph continues, For these two years hath the famine been in the land. That means there's five to go, okay? And, and he states it, And yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. Earing is an old Saxon word that means plowing. Seven, And God sent me before you, do you understand that? God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So you see, God's plan is very difficult for man to understand at times. When you love him and trust him, then his plan always works positive in the end, that it may not seem like it at times. I'm sure poor little old Joseph, when he was in prison two years, accused by everybody, his own brothers, by Potiphar's wife, uh, and him only trying to do what's right. Verse 8, to complete this lecture. So now, it is not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, this title of, uh, of uh, high office of state, uh, the Abe, which is father, is not father in the uh, Egyptian tongue. It is Ab in Pharaoh, which means the high office of Pharaoh, not the father of Pharaoh, okay? Uh, because the Egyptian was not identified because it was Abe, which is father, such as Abraham uh, in the Hebrew tongue. But here you have it. God totally in control. God knowing all the time what the people needed for their betterment. And though there were much uh, heartbreak, anxiety, look at poor old uh, I, um, uh, Israel or Jacob, that son that he so loved, maybe God just kind of, you know, it is very wrong for a parent to show partiality to children. Very wrong. God doesn't even appreciate that. But maybe it was in part a way to warn Israel, Jacob, 
not to be partial among his children because he had been showing great partiality between his wives, unfortunately, due to the trickery of Laban. But the point I want you to see is that if you have the faith to trust your father, all things always work to the good for those that love the Lord. It always happens that way. How would you have reacted had you been in that prison accused by another party of, of trying to seduce them when it hadn't entered your mind necessarily? Accused of uh, being a, a strutter, a show-off in front of your own brothers that they would sell you. Through all this, there was one thing Joseph never turned loose of. That was his faith because he knew that God was with him and the very fact of God's presence blessing everything he touched brought him to the position whereby he could be type savior in producing the grain and supplies that were needed for the people of the world at that time. So let it be a lesson and a lesson learned well that God's love always reigns supreme regardless of what effect various things have on your life when you are in him and he is in you it always works to the good all right bless your heart you listen a moment won't you please